Alright mate, how you doing? Welcome back to another episode of IMO. Today we're going to be reviewing the January transfer window for the Premier League. It's a window that's very different to the summer transfer window. You don't see as much business done. You often see teams that need a little boost, maybe in a title challenge or maybe in a relegation fight, making some changes. But not always the easiest time to find players and attract players to come to your club halfway through a season. So who's used the January transfer window best and who's had a shocker? Let's take a look. So what we're going to do on today's video is we're going to go through all 20 Premier League clubs and we're going to give them a little grade from like A to F or whatever based on uh, how they performed in the January transfer window, based on what their club needed, what they were able to do and the money they paid for any transfers they did make. We probably saw one of the least active January transfer windows in recent memory for me. There wasn't many high profile transfers, just a few. And I think what was more evident in this January transfer window was actually the lack of business done and how crucial a mistake that could be for certain clubs. Before we crack on with this video though, it is partnered with the guys from FIFA Mobile. This is the FIFA Mobile app version of FIFA. I'm a big fan of it, as you know. I really love playing it. I've showed it to you in a few different videos now. So we can take a little bit of a look at how I'm getting on on FIFA Mobile, then we're gonna crack on with the video. 15,000 coins, daily login pack, I'll take it. I'm getting a Luna bundle. Wesley Morgan, get in my team, mate. My team's getting good now. Robin Van Persie, 82 rated. Take a look at my updated team. Look at all these red items in there. Van Persie, Bassagod, Charisma. We've got a skill game to play now. Try that. Oh, hello. The decent strike. All right, let's play this game. Nice, Van Persie, into Charisma. Hit it. Charisma! Oh, what a finish. You don't save those, off the post. Oh, hit it, boys. Where's Morgan's forward? Oh, where's Morgan with a towering header on his debut? Put it in the box. That's good football, Van Persie. I mean, that's on his right foot. Pass it. Oh, it's cheeky. I went for the sweaty goal. <laughs> There's the final whistle, 5-0, I'll take it. Oh, I think I've got an elite player here, guys. Boateng, oh, that's gonna improve my defense. Look at that team now with Boateng in there. I love this game. Okay, so that is FIFA Mobile. If you wanna get yourself the app, make sure you download it. Use the link in the description. I've got my own special link, easports.com forward slash Spencer FC. Get involved, I thoroughly recommend it. Okay, let's work our way through the Premier League in alphabetical order, starting with Arsenal. This is one of the bigger transfers in the window. The only transfer they made was bringing in Denis Suarez from Barcelona. Over the years, we've seen a lot of players move between Arsenal and Barcelona. And I think partly that's because because they share a kind of footballing philosophy, they certainly have in the past. Denis Suarez has joined Arsenal. I think this is a good addition to their midfield. Emery will know the player well. He would have seen him play a lot in Spain. I believe he's coming on alone with an option to buy in the future. I think this is a good purchase. I think Arsenal fans should be excited to see what Denis Suarez can do. My only complaint for Arsenal in this transfer window is that I don't think they improved the defence, which for me is their problem area. They've got some quality attacking players like of Lacazette and Aubameyang smashing it. They still need to polish their defence, which has improved over time, but it's still lacking one or two players. We've seen what Liverpool have done since they brought in the likes of Van Dijk to sort out their defence. I feel Arsenal still need that big player, but maybe he's going to come in the summer. I like the fact that Emil Smith-Rowe has gone out on loan to the Bundesliga. There's a lot of young Brits playing the Bundesliga now. He's impressed in Europa League and little bit part performances for Arsenal, so I'm excited for him to get more game time. I think Arsenal have done okay in this transfer window. Emery's not panicking. He's got a long-term project here at Arsenal. I think he's going to get time to do that project. So yeah, by January's standards, not a bad window for Arsenal. I'm going to give him a B+. Plus. Now Bournemouth, who we're going to do next. What Bournemouth are really good at, in my opinion, under Eddie Howe, is like keeping this sort of team mentality steady, not bringing in too many big names to upset the apple cart, getting people that just slowly add and improve their squad. I think they've done that in this window. They've brought in the young Welsh defender, Chris Mefflin from Brentford. Uh, could be decent, he's already got a few caps for Wales. They haven't broken the bank at 12 million. It remains to be seen what he can do at the Premier League level. They brought in Dominic Solanke from Liverpool, another young promising player, not getting the game time he probably needs and deserves at Liverpool right now because Liverpool have been obviously smashing it. So uh, he's going to get a chance at Bournemouth perhaps. They let Jermaine Defoe go to Rangers, so they've got a little bit of an opportunity in that attack, although Solanke is still going to find himself behind the likes of Callum Wilson, who's doing really well. Although you have to wonder, are Bournemouth preparing for life after Callum Wilson? They've held on to him for this window. There's a lot of interest in the new England player. They also beat Cardiff to uh, Nathaniel Klein, who's come on loan for Liverpool, and again, needs some game time. And if they get him playing his best football, could be a really good addition for Bournemouth. So, decent window for Bournemouth. I'm a big Eddie Howe fan, and I think their squad looks stronger after the window than it did before. That's the most important thing. So, I'm going to give Bournemouth an A-. If Dominic Slanky becomes half the player he could be, 
at under 20 million, I think they're 19 million they paid for him. It could be an absolute steal. They might sell him for double that one day if he reaches his potential. Brighton, they bought in three players. McAllister, Mlaka and Christian Baluta. I've never heard of any of them, I'm not going to lie to you. Doesn't mean they couldn't end up being good signings. And in my opinion, at the time of recording this, Brighton are sitting in 13th place with 27 points. I think it's very unlikely they're going to get relegated. I think Chris Houghton deserves a lot of credit for that. He's working wonders at this club with not a lot of money. And they don't have to go out and break the bank right now because they've done well to get themselves in the position they're in. A few players have moved on, but none of the most essential players to Brighton set up. Christian Baluta has actually gone back out on loan to the team they bought him from, so he's not going to be making any kind of impact right now. I'm not saying Brighton have had a bad window. I'm just saying I'm quite indifferent towards it. I don't think it's going to be a game changer for them either way. So I'm going to give them a C. Burnley next, and for me, Burnley have missed an opportunity. They are in a relegation battle. Make no bones about it. They're not the same Burnley we've seen last season under Sean Dyche. And they've only brought in Peter Crouch, and that was part of a deal which saw Sam Vokes go the other way. I'm worried about Burnley. As I'm recording this, they're just outside the relegation zone, and their defence hasn't been good this year. They haven't changed anyone. Sean Dyche has put in faith in the defenders he's already got at the club. Could be a brave call, and it could work out for him. You don't want to splash the cash unnecessarily if there's not a player in the market you think is going to improve you. But if Burnley end up going down, they're going to look at this January transfer window as a big missed opportunity. They needed more to ensure their Premier League survival. I'm giving Burnley a D. Okay, Cardiff next. And this is a really hard one to score, guys. A really sensitive one. I'm not going to give them a grade. The reason for this is obviously the Salah situation. They signed record signing for, for Cardiff from Nantes, the, the striker Salah, who of course has been lost in this plane crash situation. We don't even know what's happened yet. There's still people searching for him and we hope. He's going to get found, and the pilot as well. But um, it's not looking good. And how these things work is that they'll probably be insured. I don't know who's going to pay out for it, but you'd like to think Cardiff won't lose the money for that transfer. But there's more important things to talk about here, such as the family of Salah and the pilot who've been lost. So I think it would be disrespectful to give Cardiff a, gr a grade for this transfer window. In terms of other players, they were unlucky to miss out on Nathaniel Klein, who chose to go to Bournemouth instead. They have brought in the ass from Everton, who has had like very limited game opportunities at Everton and has shown glimmers of being a, a Premier League capable striker. Maybe in a team like Cardiff, he'll be more effective. They also brought in Leandro Bakuna from Reading, who has got some Premier League experience before. Cardiff have impressed me at points this season because I think they've got one of the worst squads in the league. But they are currently in a relegation zone. I'm not sure their squad is going to have enough over the next few months to keep them up. But, you know, what's happened in this transfer window, I think a lot of people have got a soft spot for Cardiff now. And I'll be honest, I'd love to see them stay up. But out of respect to the Salah situation, I'm not going to give Cardiff a grade. And we're going to move on. Chelsea next, another big profile signing, and that is Higuain. He's finally in the Premier League, maybe a few years too late. Maybe most of us would have liked to see him a few years earlier in his prime, so to speak. But he's a goal scorer. He scored two today as I recorded this video. And he's a player that Sari knows well thanks to their time together at Napoli. They've also brought in Christian Pulisic, which is a big transfer, almost 60 million from Dortmund, but he's gone back out on loan to Dortmund, so we're not going to see him just yet. So that's a future transfer. But in terms of people going out the other way, we've seen Victor Moses go out on loan. We've also seen two big strikers go out on loan. Alvaro Morata, who I don't think is going to be coming back. I think it's a two-year loan to Atletico Madrid. And Michi Bacciai, who's been at Valencia this season already, but has now gone out to Crystal Palace. So they've lost two strikers technically, and they've brought one in. They've got Higuain, they've got Giroud. Is their team definitely better off than it was before? Only if Higuain bangs the sort of goals he's been banging in Italy for the last few seasons. If he doesn't, I'm not sure their squad's stronger. Because we can't think about Pulisic right now. He's not actually there yet. I'm going to give Chelsea a B-. minus. The reason I'm giving them a B- minus is because they've shown intent. Yes, yeah, Sarri's trying to make something happen here. We don't know whether Higuain's going to work out yet, but he wasn't happy with Morata. Bashai wasn't getting game time. They're trying to make a change. Chelsea have got a history of high-profile striker flops. Torres, Shevchenko, there's been a lot of them. But will Higuain be another flop or will he be a success? Let me know in the comments below. Crystal Palace next and the big profile addition for them was Michi Bacciai, who we just talked about, uh, left Chelsea on loan. I would have loved him to come to West Ham personally. We were in the market for a striker and we didn't get him. And I think Palace have done well. He should get game time at Palace. And I think he'll score goals. If he can link up with the likes of Wilfred Zahar, that could be decent. Andros Townsend's been doing really well for Palace as well. I'm impressed with this business. And they haven't lost anyone that significant, in my opinion. Punchian's gone to Huddersfield. I used to really rate Jason Punchian. I had him in my dream team years ago. But in more recent seasons, he's not really done it at all. I think Palace's squad is stronger. And based on the fact that a lot of other teams haven't done any real significant business this window, which we'll go on to see, 
I'm gonna give Palace an A minus. Speaking of clubs who have not done a lot of business, Everton have literally bought in no one. They spend a lot of money in the last few summer transfer windows. They've got a lot of players that haven't been at the club long. All the time, the manager, who also hasn't been at the club long, Silver, gets to spend with these players. They're slowly bedding in. We're not really seeing that in terms of consistent results on the pitch just yet. And this latter part of the season will be really important for Everton and the manager to prove progress is happening. But I don't resent them for not going out and buying new players because I think they're probably in a, a mid-table battle now. I don't think they're going to certainly not get any higher than seven and that's the best case scenario, more likely they're going to be around sort of 8th, ninth, 10th spot. But I can't give them a great grade for the January transfer window when they haven't done any business. The best thing you can say about them is that they haven't lost anyone big, I guess, that they've got the same group of players. They're not pretty reaching their potential based on the money they've spent the last few years. So I'm going to have to give Everton a C-. minus. Fulham up next. Fulham are a club that are in desperate need of some changes. It's not working even since Ranieri's come in. They are struggling. They're looking like favourites for relegation along with a few others. They spent a lot of money in the summer, 100 million odd, a lot of money for a promoted team, and we haven't seen that investment reflected with on-pitch performances. They've brought in Ryan Babel, ex-Liverpool player of course, uh, Harvard Nordweit, who was at West Ham a couple of seasons ago, he's come in on loan from Hoffenheim, and Lazar Markovic, another player who's had a bit of Premier League experience, it seems like he's been at Liverpool for years but barely played there, has been loaned out a lot. I am not convinced any of these players are going to make the difference. Nordweit was bang average for West Ham if I'm honest, he can play in a number of positions but he never played in any of the positions that well for us. Markovic still got a lot to prove. And Babel, yes, at his best, can be a game winner. I'm not sure he's still got that in his locker, to be honest. So for me, Fulham needed to do a lot more in this window to ensure safety. And I feel like they showed a lot of ambition in the summer that hasn't been reflected in the January transfer window. Are they preparing for a potential relegation? I think they might be, and I can't give them any more than a D minus, to be honest. They needed to do more. Speaking of clubs that needed to do more, Huddersfield are not going to get a good grade. They are smack bang bottom of the league. They're the worst team in the league right now, in my opinion. They're six points off 19th place as I record this. They've lost their manager, David Wagner, recently, who was one of the best things that happened to Huddersfield in a long time. Jason Punch is the only half high profile player they've brought in. I don't think they're going to stay up. I think the ownership at Huddersfield know that. And I think they're preparing uh, for their, their future budgets by not spending loads of money because they're probably going to go back down to the championship. Sometimes, in the long-term future of a club, that's not a bad strategy. You know, you can slowly improve the quality of the club and the results of the club over a big period of time by having a longer-term vision rather than prioritising just staying in the league this year. They might be able to use their income they've got from the Premier League to improve facilities like the Youth Academy and the training facilities, etc. So, really, you can only judge the uh, importance of Huddersfield promotion in like five to ten years from their promotion taking place. Going back down this season wouldn't necessarily be a disaster because they're overreaching. However, I'm judging this on this season. I'm judging this on their ability to compete in the Premier League based on the transfers they've done. I don't think they've been good transfers. I'm going to give Huddersfield an E because they needed the most help of any team in the league and I don't think they've gone and got it. Leicester, the two most important transfers to talk about with them. They only bought in one and that was uh, Tielemans from Monaco on loan. Interesting because Tielemans is, has been in a relegation battle really with Monaco and they've, they've let Thierry Henry go now as well of course as manager. So something wasn't quite working for them. Maybe they need players that are more prepared to get in a dogfight and he's not that kind of player. He could do quite well at uh, Leicester. He's a player that's been hotly tipped for a long, long time. The young Belgian has got decent amount of international experience. Adrian Silva has gone the other way and he hasn't really made a huge impact since coming to Leicester. Leicester are sitting 11th in the league right now. They've already got 32 points. They're nowhere near uh, in threat of relegation in my opinion. So I think they're just kind of preparing to see out the, the rest of the season. I'm not sure they're convinced with Puel as a manager. So maybe they don't want to back him that much in the window. So it's a pretty non-event of a transfer window for Leicester. Uh, I'll give them a C plus. Liverpool have done no business in terms of bringing players in, but did they need to? They had one of the best squads in the league, certainly based on the league table, the best squad, because they're top. They haven't got any huge injury crisis right now. They haven't had to replace someone, so they haven't panicked. They've made 19 million from selling Solanke. This could look like bad business if he goes on to be a future England striker. Maybe one day we'll see Bournemouth sell him for a lot more money, as I alluded to earlier. But it also could be good business in getting 20 million for a player who wasn't in their plans. I'm not going to give him a bad rating because I don't think they had to go out and do loads of business, which is actually a sign of how good their former windows have been. Could they have shown a little bit more intent by going out and getting one big name player to help bring home that first ever Premier League title. Yes, they could, but was that player out there? I wasn't aware of anyone that was kind of available or being linked to Liverpool that was going to do that for them. And the additions of like Fabinho, Shakiri, Kaito in the summer 
have already massively improved Liverpool. So, so I can't give them like an A because they haven't really done any business. But I'll give them a I'll give them a B. Man City have bought in Palaversa for seven million. Young players gone back out on loan to the team they bought in from Hajak Split. Brahim Diaz has gone to Real Madrid. That could be a transfer that comes back to bite them. At the end of the day, if Real Madrid are going to pay 22 million for a player who's not even getting in Man City's team, they know something. By all accounts, he didn't want to be at Man City anymore and Pep was like, I only want players that want to be here. But he's not going to want to be there if you're not playing in Pep. I think we could look back on this transfer one day like the same way we look at the De Bruyne leaving Chelsea or Salah leaving Chelsea transfer. He could go on to be a very good player. But if Pep wasn't going to play him, just like the Solanke leaving Liverpool transfer, £22 million in the bank doesn't hurt. They are chasing Liverpool though and I'm not convinced they're going to catch them. So you could argue they needed to do the business a little bit more than Liverpool did. For that reason, I'll give them a C. Now Man United haven't bought anyone in either. However, they bought in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer which has absolutely changed things around since Mourinho left. That is like the big transfer they've done in years to be honest because he's getting so much more out of the same players Mourinho was failing to get anything from I'm talking about Pogba I'm talking about I mean Marcus Rashford's not been bad but he has been unbelievable under Solskjaer Martial playing some of his best football Lukaku is scoring again he seems to have sorted out their defense as well they've got a lot of tough tests coming up and I know he still hasn't been beaten as I record this as Man United manager he's won all games apart from one which is a draw but that's not going to be the case in a few months they will lose games the question is how many are they going to lose can they get into that top four the way they're playing right now you'd argue they could maybe the board at Man United don't want to throw loads of money at Solskjaer to, to buy a big player because they want to see if they're going to keep Solskjaer full time first and as I said it's hard to get big players in January transfer window you pay an inflated price because clubs don't want to sell and it can end up being a panic buy I think if their aim is to get in the top four the squad they've got is capable of doing it basically a non-event of a transfer window for Manchester United more business will be done in the summer I'll give them a C I'm clapping for Newcastle, guys. They've finally broken their transfer record. They've brought in Almiron from Atlanta United, one of the stars of the MLS in uh, recent seasons. 21 million. It's a, it's a record that's been standing for a long time at Newcastle. It's a bit embarrassing, to be honest. It shows you how little Mike Ashley has invested in the club and how good a job Rafa Benitez has done with a shoestring budget. They've also brought in Bereka on loan from Monaco. They could have invested more. They could definitely have given Rafa more to play with, financially speaking, because he's done such a good job. And they are only two points above the relegation zone right now, so they're by no means safe. Almiron needs to make a big impact. I'm not convinced they've done enough to guarantee safety, but at least they've shown in 10, which is more than some other clubs have done. They've beaten their transfer record, so even if it doesn't work out, you can say they, they tried to an extent. So I'm going to give Newcastle an A. Mike Ashley has put his hand in his pocket. We've got to give him some praise finally. Well done. Southampton are also just two points above the drop right now. They brought in a new manager recently and he has had some sort of effect. I'm surprised he hasn't brought any players in. I'm really surprised to be honest because it's an opportunity for him to stamp his, you know, his mark on the squad and you can only work with what he's inherited now. Most managers like to bring their own faces in. He's obviously hoping he's got enough there to keep him in the Premier League and that's by no means assured in their current form. So unlike Newcastle, they haven't gone out and spent a bit of money. But their squad is weaker because players have left and no one's come in. So I have to say Southampton have had a poor window. They're a club that needed help. They haven't gone out and got it and given them a D. Tottenham are another team that haven't brought anyone in. They're the first team in Premier League history to go two successive transfer windows without bringing in a player. I said this about the summer transfer window. They deserve some credit for that because they built such a strong core. They didn't really need the investment. They couldn't go out and find anyone. They improved their squad because you've got to think about the nuances of team chemistry and harmony. If you keep bringing in players who can't get game time, it's a problem. They have got an issue though. They have got an issue. They know about their issues. They've got injuries. Harry Kane, Delhi Ali, Son's been away till recently uh, with duty in the Asian Cup. I'm not convinced their squad is deep enough to guarantee them their top four safety. I know it's hard to go out and improve and I know the money they've spent on the stadium has come into this, but I didn't chastise them in the summer transfer window roundup for not spending money because I praised their squad. This, however, is a different scenario. They have injury issues and they haven't got the backup that they can afford they, they definitely can afford it i know they're spending a lot of money on the stadium but are they prepared to risk not playing champions league football because that's dangerous there's a lot of clubs trying to get back in that top four and they were one of the clubs in my opinion that was kind of assured it as long as they kept that that squad level they already had which if players are injured they haven't got so i'm gonna have to say spurs You've been a little bit let down here that, that Pochettino has not been allowed to go out and buy anyone and bring someone in, particularly in the attacking areas, as backup. Because you're not the same team without Kane, you're not the same team without Son, even. To be honest, Tottenham, one of the worst windows in the league. They needed to show a little bit more ambition if they wanted to stay a Champions League club. They could still do it, they could still do it, but it's not guaranteed. I'll have to give Spurs a D as well.
Watford, not a lot to talk about. Akaka has gone out on loan. Adam Parks is coming from Southampton. These aren't game-changing transfers at either end. A non-event of a window for Watford. C minus. West Ham, the biggest story in our window was Marko Anatovic wanting a way to go to China. We managed to hold on to him. He sort of said he wanted to leave. Then he said, oh guys, I didn't really want to leave. I want to stay and all this sort of thing. It's a shame for me as a West Ham fan to see these players come in, become cult heroes or club heroes and then basically want to go as soon as it starts working out for them. We saw it with Payet and we saw it with Arnie and I'm convinced even though he signed a contract extension, we'll probably lose Arnie in the summer. Um, I can live with that if Pellegrini gets to invest in a, a big player in the summer. He's been linked with Maxi Gomez recently. It's going to be a £40 million transfer if it happens. And hopefully Arnie can give us a good few months before he does potentially go. We did bring in Sami Nasri who I wasn't sure about, to be honest. I'm not sure if he's passed his best. He's got an assist since he came back into the team already, and he's added something. We're hopefully going to get Lanzini back from injury soon. Jack Wilshere still being out. We've had a lot of bad injury luck this season and for a lot of the last few seasons. So getting some of those players back will be like new signings, particularly Lanzini, if he can play a part in the latter end of the season. We haven't lost anyone high profile. Reese Oxford's gone out on loan again, but he's not featured in first team football for a number of years now. We're not gonna get relegated, I'm convinced of that. We definitely had an opportunity a few weeks ago where we could have pushed and got into a safe seventh spot, but failing to beat teams like Bournemouth and Wolves have really hurt us. And we probably could have used another striker. I know we had offers for Hernandez come in, I think seven million from Valencia. We didn't want to let him go, but probably because we couldn't get the striker we wanted. Why didn't we get Batshuayi on loan? Why did he go to Crystal Palace? Could we have gone in harder for Giroud? I don't know. I definitely think we could have had a better window, but we kept Arnie, we got Nasri, and we didn't lose anyone high profile. So I'll give us a B minus. Finally, Wolves have let Benekafobi go to Stoke for 12 million. This player just keeps going between clubs, left, right and centre. There's a lot of money spent on him, Afobi, over the years. Um, yeah, he wasn't featuring. Their team's really competitive now. Afobi's not quite of that level. They brought in Johnny Otto on a, a permanent transfer. He's impressed on loan from Atletico Madrid. 18 million. Decent investment from Wolves, showing real intent. And their squad, I think, is really solid now. They're currently sitting in seventh and they could easily stay there, to be honest. And to be in this position after the January transfer window in their first season back in the Prem is really, really solid. A lot of people tipped Wolves to do well because the money they've spent and the team they've got and this Portuguese kind of theme they've got running through the squad. But to actually do it is harder. You know, people tipped Fulham to do well as well because the money they spent hasn't gone that way. So well done to Wolves. You didn't have to go out there and break the bank this window. You haven't lost any one key. Still got the likes of Ruben Neves there. Fair play to Wolves. I'll give them a B plus. That's the end of my January transfer window roundup. Not many teams getting great marks because not a lot of business was done. I think the, the bigger talking points here are the bad windows. You know, the likes of Huddersfield haven't shown the intent they needed to. Spurs have not impressed me. Let me know in the comments below who you think had the best window, who you think had the worst window, what was the best signing, what was the worst signing of the window. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Check out FIFA Mobile using the link in the description, easports.com forward slash Spencer FC. Download it, it's quality. See you on another video soon. Until then, don't go change. Don't go change to try Never let me down before